Nice to see everybody. No my hara my koito, kite na onga hui huinga, to ye te hede tangata, an exploration of global citizenship education and our Māori perspective. So this is going to be quite an organic uh sort of a conversation since uh these people just keep coming in the front and centre, but we'll be okay. So we're just going to have a look at some of the things that that are relating to an old Māori perspective. It's it's around indigeneity, it's around indigenous um, whakaro as well, and how that is going to affect in terms of global citizenship education, okay? I'm going to start off with our, um, our whakatauki here. Um, before we get into our mihi with um, Tana and myself. Um, and this whakatauki helps to set the scene for this webinar. So it's uh, tuia ki te rangi, tuia ki te whenua, tuia ki te moana, tuia ki te here tangata, Karongo te po, karongo te ao, te hei mauri ora. And with, when we break all those words down, we've got tuia, and tuia means to bind, to connect, um, and to make those connections. Tuia ki te rangi means rangi as in the heavens and the skies. Mm -hmm. Tuia ki te rangi, so making connections with what's up above us. Tuia ki te whenua is making connections with the land. Mm -hmm. Tuia ki te moana, making connections with our oceans and all of our water bodies. Tuia ki te here tangata, that means um, to humankind, to us as humans. Karongo te po, karongo te ao. So in Māori we might have, you might hear people saying ao te po, po te ao. So that means like 24-7 and tihei mauri ora at the end. So what that is all about, that whakatauki is all about, is um, it gives you an insight into uh, um, our Māori worldview. It describes what's happening in the heavens, impacts what's happening on the land, impacts what's happening in our water bodies, in our rivers, in our oceans, which also impacts on us as humankind. So um, when we're looking at this whakatauki, it's also around a tohu or a sign to us that we're all, all interconnected, so we must protect and care for all the relationships we have with our environment and they with us. Oh, is this me? This you. Hi. Okay, so yeah, just a brief overview of our kōrero today. So yeah, like Miri Miri stated, it will be quite organic. So <laughs> think of the PowerPoint as more of a guideline. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll do a brief intro as to who CAPES are, which some of you, or well, most of us will be familiar with. Um, yeah, and then we'll sort of explore some key ideas, I guess, in um, the GC Ed Global Citizenship Education space, but more specifically looking at, yeah, I guess how it relates to Indigenous, um, whether that be education, ways of being, um, and then we will sort of relate it back to what it could look like in the classroom, um, and then just finishing up with some sort of key closing call at all. But if anyone has a question or wants to make a comment at any point, feel free to, I think you can virtually raise your hand or um, just drop it in the chat. So yeah, kia ora. So here's some ponderings that um, Tyler and I came up with around our kaupapa today. And those, as you can see with those questions, they are big, big, huge questions for us to think about. The first one, how does global citizenship education resonate with Māori as tangata whenua? Um, where does Indigenous education fit in global citizenship education? And what could this look like in the classroom? In your own words, what do the words citizenship, tangata whenua, and Indigenous mean to you? Citizenship, tangata whenua, and Indigenous. Cool. So there's, yeah, just around identity, contributing responsibly, um, belonging, understanding, um, people of the land, being a part of something bigger than yourself, um, Māori hu whakapapa to the whenua, atua who created the world, a place with agreed rights and responsibilities, original occupants of the land. Okay. Kia ora. Okay. Oh, good. All right. So we're going to start looking at it from an old Māori perspective now. So we're going to start off with um, exploring this notion around tangata whenua tanga. And I know one of you had written people belonging 
people of the land, people belonging to the land. And as as Māori, um, we have there's some similarities that we have with other indigenous peoples. And if you don't know about those similarities, and as a global citizen yourself, I, I suggest that you go out and have a have a good look at what's happening around the world because global education should actually be covering some of these sorts of things as well. So we have similarities with other Indigenous peoples, and some of those are just examples that I've given right there. One of the things that we're going to look at as well is that I've got a little picture there of a little baby, and the Māori word for whenua is land, but it also means placenta. And that's the placenta is, is inside your womb, and that's protects, that protects the little baby. So in Māori din, um, after a baby is born, the placenta is usually returned to the earth, and it's buried. So it's just around why we do that is because we're returning that whenua or that placenta and all the things that um, of our of our of my kids' bodies as well as my own body is returning it back to um, to the land because it's a, a way of how um, Maori, of how we, how I, how my whanau connect with the whenua. We connect with our spirituality to our atua and also to our ancestors. But today, however, many whānau are dislocated from their traditional land and now they have to base themselves in other districts. So the other point that I wanted to talk to you about is just around Māori and Aotearoa New Zealand and um, there are two worlds that Māori walk in. There's the mainstream everyday world that we know of, that we're all used to, and we've inherited that from the British, from our colonial um, empire, from the British Empire which privileges all those behaviours, those days, those attitudes provided by European cultures as that norm. So when we're, we're used to that sort of stuff. But on another way, there is also the second Māori world, which includes our marae, our hapu and iwi, of all our narratives that contain our different values, our beliefs and attitudes. And when Māori cannot operate comfortably in that Māori world, then that can have a traumatic effect on identity and participation in society as both a New Zealand citizen as well as a Māori or a member of the Hapu and Iwi. This one here is around exploring citizenship. So we've just looked at tangata whenua tanga. Now we're going to look at exploring citizenship as Māori. So here's some things for you to think about. Māori are Indigenous people of Aotearoa. Um, the Tiriti or Waitangi was signed in 1840 between the British Crown and Māori rangatira as we we should already know that is Kaioko. And um, there are two versions. There was the Māori language version and there was an English language version. The Māori language version was called Te Tiriti. The English language version was called the Treaty of Waitangi. More Māori signed the Māori language Te Tiriti version. And under Te Tiriti, these are the three articles granted the crown to govern their own people. Right. And I'll say that again. Under Te Tiriti, it granted the crown to govern their own people, um, which is different to the Treaty of Waitangi. It promised that Māori would retain Tino Rangatiratanga, and it confirmed all rights and privileges of British citizens or British subjects to Māori. So let's have a look at what that looks like. The price of citizenship for Māori, the price that Māori is tangata whenua pay to be a citizen of Aotearoa New Zealand. Uh, you can figure out what some of those things are because we've already met them in the other slides. I'll just bring these up here. These are some of the things that have had to, that might have had to go through in, in order to be a citizen of Aotearoa New Zealand and using that word as a citizen of Aotearoa New Zealand. So what does this mean for global citizenship education here in Aotearoa New Zealand? Knowing that we've just looked at tangata whenua tanga, We've just looked at the word for citizen. What does this mean? So we're going to get you into a breakout into a little wānanga room. And we're going to be looking at a couple of these questions here. And I was just thinking about it, like in terms of the global citizenship education overall, and what sort of things is coming out in there? What sort of kaupapa comes out from global citizenship education? And to me, I don't think we can have a conversation or any more of these webinars without first acknowledging who's sitting at the table of global citizenship education. When you're planning, for example, especially if you're teachers and you're thinking about these sorts of kaupapa, what sorts of kaupapa can we have in terms of global citizenship education for these tamariki that you have in front of you? And if that table doesn't include the worldviews, the understandings and the histories of Indigenous people, 
then can we really call it global citizenship education? All right. So there's a couple of questions there. Who is sitting at the table of global citizenship education in your settings? And the second one, how could global citizenship education be taught so that's valued and considered relevant for your Māori students, considering they also have to stay, uh, they also have to be in two worlds at once? <laughs> um, I, I can, while I'm here, I could feedback a little bit. We talked about, you know, who is who is sitting at the table and talked about whether it's tokenistic or not we talked about um, schools not having the resource and then if we if there is someone who can provide support PLD and te ao Māori whatever that looks like then they carry a burden and that burden can be heavy and it can burn mm. out our people and so then and that's why we're seeing people leave and so you know that's that's a massive issue so how do we get people um, into our kura how do we get good people into our kura because all schools are screaming out for um, support around you know all these changes that are coming through about Manori Simoti Mataranga Māori and that's just for starters and so it seems there's quite a dilemma there for our uh, Māori. Anyone else? Thank you Charlie. I think Lauren our kid yeah. New Zealand Beautiful had some nice vocabulary to share. <laughs> I was going to suggest that too, Tyler. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just share it quickly. I um, sort of talked a little bit, actually, um, we started off talking about um, uh, the same sort of thing that Charlie mentioned about, you know, it's a burden on certain people to do things the right way or, or how are we going to do it? And so sometimes in multicultural situations, Māori don't end up being represented. Um, as much as other cultures because no one wants to take that step forward to, with confidence um, to do that. Um, but the other thing that I talked about was that um, with when I worked at Onihunga High and I were and there was a lot of um, Pacifica students there and the idea that these students um, feel like they have to kind of fit into a box of like, this is what it means to be Samoan, this is what it means to be Tonga Nui and, you know, even Māori or whatever it might be. And that not recognising that they have a unique experience themselves by being a um, of Samoan heritage growing up in New Zealand or being Nuean heritage and growing up in New Zealand. And even though there might be certain parts of their culture that they believe they should be um, doing or respecting or abiding by, um, it doesn't make them any less Samoan Māori Tongan if they don't. Um, yeah, just lots of kids. That whole identity crisis, right? Of like, I'm not this particular person, type of person or group of people because I don't do this thing. Yeah. That was beautifully said. That made absolute sense to me. <laughs> That's us, Miri Miri. I guess because we've sort of touched on, yeah, I guess the um, word or the term citizenship. Um, but if we're relating that to our growing definition of um, what tangata, whenua tanga sort of represents and means, um, yeah, I guess for us, for Miri Miri and I, we just wanted to stress or explain the importance of I guess how when you can slap terms on some things, they can come across quite problematic. And it's not to say that all Māori view citizenship is problematic, but I think, you know, in learning the histories and the whakapapa of where these terms were created from or what they may have initially met, um, sorry, initially meant, um, you can see why, yeah, it can come across, yeah age-old word of problematic so um I guess happy for us to hear if people have Ricardo in this space um yeah this is more just I guess a prompt from us that you know yes citizenship can mean belonging and being you know part of a ropu but then also like Miri Miri sort of um mentioned previously around you know when there was the world war um, and 
during that time, Māori were going through a lot of grievances, you know, land removal, all of that stuff, and then expected to go off and fight, you know, be part of um, a society or, you know, fight alongside their peers when in reality that wasn't necessarily what was reflected back here in Aotearoa. Um, but, you know, that was coined the price of citizenship. And so, yeah, I guess we're just bringing this korero um, forward mm -hmm. to as a reminder of you know when we throw around terms um, that actually who we're addressing and like I said um, yeah not all because Miri Miri and I don't represent all Māori <laughs> <laughs> we're just simply sharing our truths or what we've sort of um, the spaces that we've been privileged to be in to understand yeah how these terms can come across is there anything I missed there, Miri Miri? No, I don't think so. Right, it's on it. All right, I think we'll go to the next. Um, but so, yeah, like we alluded to earlier, um, it's always good to come away from kōrero like this with some sort of tangible or um, things that you can relate back to your practice, whether that be in the classroom, just in everyday life. Um, and a lot of it we sort of may already do, but we don't necessarily explore the why we do it right we you know we know we need to teach our kids to read because they might need to pass the test or whatever but it's actually the why so that they can interpret their world so that you know um they can be competent um here I'm going same citizens but um so yeah we have plotted down just a few of the many things of how this could look in your classroom um, but I think, yeah, just sort of the crux of it. Um, so if we look at activities, right, and we talked about identity and um, for a lot of Māori and probably Indigenous worldwide, you know, identity crisis is real, um, especially for our Pacifica whānau that have um, come to make Aotearoa New Zealand their second home as well. And so um, some activities could be, yeah, like how Miri Miri and I talked about our pepeha, our whakapapa, um, you know, bringing an object of importance into your classroom so that I guess the kids are getting to share a bit of, you know, who they are. And as educators or as teachers, we're understanding a bit of, you know, why they are the way they are, <laughs> products of their environment and their culture and their upbringing and all the intergenerational trauma that's sort of being passed down to them. Um, and then there's the whole obviously creating a safe space um, and so this isn't just for our Māori kids this is for all kids right we want a space where they feel like they're culturally thriving so what does that look like um, yes we have we've heard of sort of um, these cultural celebrations where kids may parade around and sort of share a bit of their culture but actually what are you doing inside your classroom to maintain that momentum of a safe space for them um, and then one thing that I've sort of come across in my really little stint in teaching um, was around we sometimes place a lot of um, expectations on whānau and you know making sure they're coming into the classroom and that they're you know playing a role in the kids lives which yes that's a no-brainer that's very important but then I challenge us to think about what we're doing or what role we play in the whānau or in the community so you know whether you're in a school or you're whichever community you're based in, what are you actively and intentionally doing to ensure you're connecting with the community? Um, it's just that idea of reciprocity, right? And then, yeah, as I'm sure it's a given, developing your own understanding of te ao Māori, um, doing your own homework, you know, signing up to those free deal um, lessons, there's a plethora of resources out there today. So there really isn't sort of an excuse not to. Um, and then I guess lastly, which is sort of ties into the GC Ed space is around a values-based learning approach rather than, yeah. So, you know, unpacking as a class or, you know, as kids, what are their values and what does that look like in practice and in, you know, what you're doing in the classroom? Um, but that's enough yarning from me. Did you have anything to add, Miri Miri? 
Oh, it's just a comment I want to make on those uh, week-long things. For example, week-long, we're going to celebrate a certain culture. So for that one week, the culture is being celebrated. So what is the rest of the other school weeks? What's happening with those kids? Uh, what culture is being celebrated for the rest of the other weeks of the school year? So just wanted to plug that in there anyway. Yeah. Um, and like, does anyone, if anyone has any examples that they might do in, yeah, whether it be in your home or in your classroom, please feel free to share them with us in the chat. Or if it's super exciting and exhilarating and we all must hear it, um, <laughs> please feel free to <laughs> share. Um, otherwise, I'm going to skip to our next slide. Um, so like everything, when you can, you do a cheeky little plug. So um, part of my mahi alongside our Capes Education Fano is I look after a year 10 rangatahi summit called Te Rangi um, And it pretty much just explores what we've just talked about. Um, so it's GCE, but what that means to our rangatahi Māori, specifically for this programme, our year 10 Māori. Um, and so, yeah, like we've sort of touched on today, we explore whiria, paiheretia and rukuhia. And so those are terms that um, are affiliated with Te Rangi Tāmiro because Te Rangi Tāmiro is, I guess, in the context of binding or weaving or twisting of fibres. So um, fidia in this context is, yeah, that whole idea around identity. Um, so in the programme, we, you know, do activities or workshops that sort of, it might be like a kai kōrero, a speaker sharing his story, um, or yeah, just anything identity, cultural, that's it. Um, then paiheretia is that idea of our connections, our hononga. So, um, you know, that could look like, so here in Waikato, we did um, Te Rangi and we connected with Ngāti Haua, um, one of the local iwi, um, which sort of leads into ruku here. So ruku here, can mean like to dive um, but in this context we talk about delving and diving into I guess sort of like the global community or local communities um, and to sort of put it briefly it's around sort of creating a legacy so what we can do with the kids now to understand or you know they all sort of interconnect but um, what they can do to create their own legacies and I guess even them knowing that they're a part of a legacy um, so if you have you know you know people that have year 10s and you think that they might want to be involved in this kaupapa come next year um, you'll see our details to flick us a message too, so no costs um, but yeah I thought I'd just do a cheeky plug while I have us here <laughs> Like we sort of posed at the start of the session around some ponderings. Um, so I guess now this is a, a bit of an open floor, but a managed open floor because we've got time restraints. Um, yeah, just around any of the three parts I hear, if um, you want to jot it in the chat, even if we just wanted to sort of share maybe some key vocado that you've had pertaining to the three questions here um yeah this is a sort of wānanga space so open to hearing or <laughs> but yeah so just how does global citizenship education resonate resonate with Māori as tangata whenua um where does indigenous education fit in GC ed um and what could global citizenship education that is relevant and useful for Māori students um, as they navigate the various aspects of being Māori in the 21st century. Um, yeah, does anyone have any? <laughs> Kyla and Mary, Mary, I just wanted to um, pick up, I think, on the discussion and the ongoing discussion around that word citizenship. And I think in our team, we've obviously drawn on... Um, global perspectives or of um, global citizenship and as we've kind of developed our own understanding and one of the things we've talked about a lot is how how can we 
uh, create something that is unique to Aotearoa New Zealand in terms of the way mm. we look at um, this idea mm. and as distinct from having a te ao Māori perspective mm. and you I think what I'm trying to say is that you really made me think about the language that we use and because the you know across the world people are talking about global citizenship I do now really wonder about our use of that word and it's so loaded and um and I guess thinking about could we create and, and you talked about um tanga te whenua tanga whenua tanga and um you know could we come up with a different way of describing it that more accurately reflects what mm. the way we want to view this within Aotearoa New Zealand while still talking about the same concept of like concepts of identity and um, belonging and um, and res our responsibilities as um, as and as we know Indigenous peoples have long talked about responsibilities mm. for the land and our world. So I guess to sum up, I just think it would be really great to continue to talk about what that word citizenship means and what it looks like in our setting here in uh, mm. New Zealand. So thank you very much for that. Mm -hmm. Mm, I, I think I, you know, I agree, Pip. You know, when when we first started this conversation with you, Mary, Mary, and we and, and you were like, well, what is what is global citizenship education? You know, um, with the team, and we were, we were having to sort of think on our feet and go, okay, well, well this is what we believe. But actually, you know, when we t start to take a few steps back and actually look at that word citizenship, and it's a word that comes out of privilege. And so, you know, for me, from my background, um, I, I find it easy to deal with the word citizenship because I come from a background of privilege. Mm -hmm. um, and so from somebody else's perspective, that word citizenship, as you've demonstrated today, has quite a different meaning and a different feeling behind it. Um, and so it, it is something that I think we have to a, tread carefully in our use of and actually really think about the impact of the use of language that we have yeah, yeah. Um, with others. Um, and, and one of the other things that I, I really liked that you, you brought in was the idea of values-based education because I think that is something that really draws people together, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I think um, you also said that, you know, when you're looking at... Um, something new you look at connections um, rather than um, separating things into pieces and trying to analyze them and from a values education perspective we look at what binds us together rather than what necessarily um, makes us different yeah. and so that's that's something I think we, we probably need to look at as well and so thank you for that really really thought-provoking um, around um, language mm. Mm. Hey, thank you. Um, I've got way more questions now than answers. <laughs> I've got lots to think about. And even the, you know, tangata whenua, and I just think about all the Indigenous people across the globe who, you know, where do they sit in this space as well? And I think of, mm. um, you know, I'm from Aitutaki and I know, and it's kind of, I didn't get brought up with my language because when mum came, it was assimilation. Like mm. she was in Aitutaki and they got strapped as well. Like it was the same as in New Zealand. Wow. So, um, cause it was governed by New Zealand. So, you know, there's this almost, you know, this, this culture loss feeling that you have that you're not, you know, Pacifica enough or yeah. people think you're Maori. And so, you know, and my values when I went to school was, you listen to your teacher you know that's a real strong Pacific value you do what you're told and so I would you know do what my teacher said you know and and when my teacher thought I was Maori I didn't correct him or her so yeah there's a lot so many questions in this mm. I suppose I wanted to know what the first question how does it resonate with with Maori as tangata whenua like it's not a question that I have asked so I'm really curious about that yeah, I think one thing, and again, I think the use of global citizenship education, where it can, again, be a bit um, 
tricky is because it was something that was already creative right it was a sort of western introduced concept like a lot of Mm. our education framework um and so a lot of my work is yeah rather than just this Maori girl trying to unpack a whole lot of history and um is that you know the reason why Te Rangi Tāmero was formed was like we're practicing these things but it's sort of we're hearing from rangatahi first like we're not um so I guess part of it is trying to re not reclaim the space but it's more so like creating a new space that actually yeah and again I guess lucky for me my privilege being that because I haven't been in the teaching sector for that long, I'm not bound by, you know, school policy or the politics of education and the curriculum. Like when I hear that, I'm like, oh, gross, let's actually <laughs> move away and design our own space. Um, and so, yeah, as it currently sits, I don't think, yeah, tangata, whenua, Indigenous Māori necessarily see themselves in it because, you know, we often term or we pair um, global with this idea of international and with that comes a lot of barriers right which you know a lot of our rangatahi they don't see themselves going overseas because it's just out of their reach so I think in order to sort of really meet the needs of Māori tangata whenua is you know identifying where they're at currently and then building on from that so planting those seeds and then hopefully I said to them well you know 10 years time that you'll come to me and say Tyler I've traveled the world because you know we've sort of um aki aki like supported them to get there um but yeah I think we just like really need to strip it back but it's guided by rangatahi Māori so there's like a really long-winded answer <laughs> <laughs> a answer it's, it's not it's, the answer but yeah. an answer mm. <laughs> yeah but um just again because I am conscious of time um yeah if there's any other riveting kōrero please feel free to write it in our chat oh can I change but yeah so upcoming kōpapa for this series so yesterday we've looked at um an our Māori perspective and then obviously coming up on the 24th of November um is the last webinar the design thinking and action so I'm sure everyone has subscribed and has that noted in their calendars um this is the team our emails um you'll all be sent this so you don't really need to take notes or and it is recorded um and then Miri Miri I'll let you plug your kind of services because you know a bit better than I oh this is just about us it's to fly to Itangata if you would like some PRD uh, support out there in your schools and with your teachers get in touch with us we're to fly to Itangata love it <laughs> um and then yeah the cakes obviously centers of Asia Pacific um sign up for the newsletter we do lots of exciting things. This is just one of the many um, initiatives that come out of the Cape space. Kia that's us. Hope you enjoyed and we learned something <laughs> and let's stay connected. Well, most of us will anyway, because we have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes. Thank Kia you. Kaki